Uh, joining us now, assistant editor at the Daily Mirror, Darren Lewis. And, well, this is interesting because we now face Italy in the final mm. on Sunday. So Italian football journalist Mina Rizuki, uh, she joins us again this week. We spoke to her a little bit earlier in the week, Mina. We're going to come to that clash in just a moment. But, Darren, oh, wow, wasn't it special? Uh, it really was. Incredible night, incredible atmosphere. The headline on the front page of the Daily Mirror this morning sums it up. One word, finally, as a nation, you guys, you all know, the viewers all know, we've cried on so many occasions last night when we've fallen at that semi-final herd or missed crucial penalties. But last night it was our turn and we found a way to win. I was listening to your conversation a second ago and, you, you, Alistair, you were saying that we were very fortuitous and you're right, we were with that penalty. But, you know, I would point to times when the luck was so against England over the yeah, years. Sure. Look at major tournaments like the 2010 World Cup, Frank Lampard's goal clearly over the line. Yeah. And, and of God. That, exactly. There have been so many occasions where we've been left heartbroken by bad decisions that have gone our way. Absolutely, we'd have been upset had that penalty gone against us. But we, two things are really important to remember. The best teams find a way to win and you make your own luck. And I think England really did, with their perseverance last night, make their own luck. So I left Wembley at 1am last night. The fact there were still fans there celebrating. Yeah. Um, but as I said to you, you know, uh, when you asked me on here at the start of the tournament to talk about it, I've always felt England have had every chance of winning this tournament because the players, they're just not weighed down mm. by all of the failures of the past and the heartbreak and all the things that we all kind of look back on uh, with regret. These are a different generation, a young group who are talented and they're harnessed by a fantastic manager. Darren, can I say that the, yeah. I'll, I'll give you a great stat. Uh, Harry, <laughs> Kane, a... Harry Kane has now scored 15 times against Kasper Schmeichel and that is the most... The, the, the goalkeeper who has conceded the most goals to Harry Kane. And do you know who's next with 10? Jordan Pickford. That's a good stat for you, Darren. You've got to admit, that's it's a good a stat. stat. It's a terrific stat. You know, I like to give you one back, Alistair. So, Kane's uh, 10 goals for England at major tournaments. Equals Level Gary with... Lineker. Oh, don't uh, steal his thunder, uh, Alistair. <laughs> no, you're very welcome on a day like this. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a great achievement on a great day for the country. Yeah. And as yeah. I said before, no, I think uh, we should all be celebrating right now because of all of the heartbreak that we've had in the past. Uh, it, it, you, that's exactly what Kate said, Darren. It is, a, it's a moment of our hearts lifting and, and yeah, exactly, a little really bit like, of burden oh, you being know? taken off our shoulders. Yeah, and there's a I, bit I, of I, joy and something to be excited about, don't you think, Darren? Absolutely. And listen, everyone going to school, to work, the yeah. office, wherever, they're all going to be talking about either A, where they were when they saw it, and B, how they felt. You know, there is a generation now who will never know what we've all gone through. Mm. Euro 96, Italia 90, mm. all of the, the big tournaments where we've gone out on penalties or been outclassed yeah. or had bad luck yeah. against us. World Cup 86, of course. And just, you know, I mentioned Southgate a second ago. All of us remember when he missed that penalty and he was consoled, he looked heartbroken. To see him last night doing that, punching the air, applauding the fans, head up rather than down, after all of the money that was thrown at the likes of Ericsson and Capello and the other managers, an unassuming guy like Southgate, we've all come to love, admire, respect, getting the credit he so richly deserves. It was a wonderful uh, sight to see. Oh, I think, Dan, I think, you're sorry, making sorry. me quite emotional. Yeah, but it's I, a I, real I, lesson right about... in, in sort of sticking at things as well. That's what I yeah. thought, Darren. You know, like you talk to your kids about bouncing back and not taking the knocks. And as you say, seeing him cheering and happy, you just thought, yes, you know, mm. it's the old tortoise and hare and whatever lesson you want to learn about... Uh, sticking at things and coming yeah. through, you know, it's it's and it's great. When you look when you look at Southgate as well, I mean, he was appointed in November 2016, I think it was, and he was quite an underwhelming appointment. Yeah. He wasn't flashy like the other guys. Some people thought, oh, couldn't we get somebody better? Something. But he has had the best relationship with the players I can remember, and now we're on the verge of the biggest sporting story in English sport in 50 years. The celebrations, guys. 
for the cricket, the Rugby World Cup mm. will not be on the same ballpark if we manage to pull it off against Italy on Sunday. Darren, did you, did you, um, you were at the games, you probably didn't listen to the commentary, but um, I do think that one of the reasons why people love this England team, is, yes, it's because of Southgate's leadership, but as Kate says, mm. people like Sterling, what they've mm. been through, people like Kane, what he's been mm. through, Harry Maguire, what he went through not long ago, Pickford's been through some terrible times. Mm. But also, Gary Neville said on the commentary last night that Gareth Southgate was showing the sort of leadership that sadly we are not seeing in other parts of our public life. <laughs> and I'm I sorry, but I think that's How did this right? become a about Boris Johnson. <laughs> well, well what, what, why is he well, wearing well, a shirt over it? Who wears a football <laughs> shirt over a shirt and tie? Are we Who does Facebook? that? Because Boris and Carrie Who with ever their does that night? in the real world? He's got a <laughs> shirt and tie on and he puts an English shirt on top. Please. I'll tell you what I'll do. I, I'll tell you what I'll do. I, I, I won't cross too much into the politics, but I will say this because they won't get that much of a mention. The England, the PR team, you know all about PR, uh, Alistair. Yeah, the, the PR team around England yeah, deserve a special mention. And this is the reason why. Yeah. In the past, the England team have been treated like rock stars. There's been mm. a detachment between yeah. them yeah. and the media and the public. And so yeah. they've not really opened up in the mm. way that this England team have. So you've got Danny Rose, who's not in this squad, but before the Russia World Cup, he talked about mental health, very yeah. open about it. Yeah. And the PR team encouraged that. Southgate yeah. encourages that because they see the value of connecting Absolutely. with the nation. And we're not, and seeing, we're not seeing the wags. That, they feel the most connected with this England yeah. team in my lifetime. Just, I, I mean, that's a really important point, Darren, compares. because, of course, remember Emma Raducanu um, earlier on in the week uh, had that moment where she just got overwhelmed at the end mm. of her match at Wimbledon uh, and, and withdrew and, and, and admitted, you know, just, it just you know, all got a little bit too much for her. And Marcus Rashford tweeted, tweeted her and said, yeah. you know Absolutely. what, Emma, it's happened to me. Mm. And it happened to me when I think he, it was 16. an under-16 match mm. against Wales. And he said, and, it, and then it didn't happen again. You know, it's that, it's that incredibly relatable sense of you can fail you can fail and then you can come back. And what I love about this as well is another generation of young children will be playing on the smallest postage stamp size gardens in the front lounge mm -hmm. with their siblings, with the brothers and sisters, yeah. doing a running commentary mm -hmm. saying, and Sterling passes to Kane, passes to Chip. They'll be living this right yeah. now and it'll inspire a new generation of footballers in the future. And you know what? Harry Kane's uh, penalty uh, exemplifies that. You can, Mina, have, you, you can have that moment <laughs> saved, but you come back and you get it in the back of the net anyway, don't go. you, Harry? There Should we have go. held it. Kasper Schmeichel can do his best, but he can't keep it out. Um, Mina Rizuki. <laughs> I'm getting emotional. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But Mina, can you, can you bring these England fans a little bit down to earth today? <laughs> no, are they I mean, now they up? Are they now up against the best team in the tournament? Well, not if we're going to judge it based on the match against Spain, because I'm not entirely sure Italy were the best team in that match. Yeah. I think overall in this tournament, Italy have been magnificent. Um, I think you could really see the fruits of the labour, how much they've tried to change their persona from being simply a defensive side to one that has attacking flair and a, and a wonderful group of players. You know, you speak about that, about sort of the brotherhood on the pitch. This is something that is so heavily spoken about in Italy. I mean, when Italy didn't qualify for the World Cup, it was deemed an apocalypse. And that was actually the headlines mm. everywhere in mm. Italy. It was the end of the world for some of them. I mean, <laughs> I mean, there need to be writers who come on board to simply say, it's just the end of, a, a, of you know, the World Cup, like, let's calm down. But, you know, tragedy obviously struck in that mm. world. And then then the pandemic happened and Mancini wasn't even first choice. Everyone wanted Carlo Ancelotti. Was Roberto Mancini really the man to get everyone on board? He was always a divisive figure. He was always against everything that was going on. He had arguments with Marie Tussari, with referees, with journalists. And his one, you know, his famous goal against West Germany in 1988 in the Euros, he went and, and pointed all the journalists and said, you know, come on, talk about me now. Was this the man to bring back the brotherhood? But he did. And, you know, just as, a, as, as England right now is, is, a, is a beautiful story of a team that is united under a magnificent man who just oozes so much calm and 
ser beautiful ser serenity. I think that for Roberto Mancini and his, his you know, youngsters that he's brought on with a few famous faces in Giorgio Chiellini, all the players, yeah. it's also that. It's the brotherhood with Gianluca Vialli on the sidelines. It's the brotherhood on the pitch. It's oh, been I'm absorbed. Emotional, as now. <laughs> I'm trying <laughs> to guide the original. <laughs> M Mina, can I ask you something as well? I know you're a football expert. There's, there's a club in Italy, Atalanta, <laughs> that aren't that well known around the world, but they have got, I think they've now, their players have now scored more goals in this World Cup than any other club. And that they're from tough. Bergamo, which was hard hit by COVID. Why is, the, why is Atalanta so good? Atalanta has always been famous for their academy and their scouting academy and, and really bringing about uh, Italian talent to the fore. But they are a side with a very small budget, never really been capable of sort of uh, playing with the big boys. But since they've brought in Gian Piero Gasparini, who is a, a renowned coach in Italy, he has really been able to make use of that academy and of that scouting network and started to show that talent on the big stage, giving them the courage required. Um, and Atalanta has been home to some of the, the greatest players really coming out of mm. Italy. When you look at Denmark, for example, Maele yeah. is from Atalanta. Mm. Um, Gosens at Germany was from A A Atalanta. Pessina, who's scoring for Italy, was from, is from Atalanta. And um, really, I would have to say, when it comes to that club, it's a very well-run club. Like you said, they are from Bergamo, which was the epicenter yeah. of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, and a lot was talked about whether or not there was a match that happened between Atalanta and Europe and whether that caused all the pain that they had to go through. But when you see those images of the of the crematorium back then and Roberto Mancini said, this is why football is important. We need to unite a nation that has suffered all right, so Mina. much. And that's what Thank he's you. done and that's what Gareth Southgate's done. A and great then they game. Go up against each other on Sunday. Thank you both very much indeed.